Hi, Homeworthy. I'm Sarah. Welcome to my Utah home. Come on in. Hi, I'm Allison Kenworthy, the founder of Homeworthy, and we're now offering a membership plan that gives our supporters early and exclusive access to new videos. Hi, Homeworthy. I'm Roz. You're here at my home in Los Angeles? Come on in, I can't wait to show you around. With this membership, we invite you to open more doors, discovering new homes, rooms, and personalities available only to those with the keys to our guest house. You'll be part of a community of people who are just as passionate as you are about interior design. To access all of this exclusive content, simply click the join button below to become a member today. You're watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. Hi, I'm Sarah Charlesworth. Um, this is our house in Salt Lake City, Utah. I am an interior designer, a content creator, photographer, and mother, and so much more. So this house is, I would say, a craftsman style house. Um, it's definitely sort of like this small craftsman bungalow, you would say. Um, it it's, uh, was built in 1913, I believe, so it's definitely over 100 years old. I think it's hard to name my personal style. I feel like it is a combination of a lot of things. I feel like I really want it to feel cozy and happy and sort of whimsical. Um, I'm very drawn to English design, which is kind of a problem because everything I find comes that I love comes from England. And then, you know, you got to figure out, does it make sense to actually bring it here? So I think like Scandinavian um, English design is something that I'm always really drawn to. But overall, I just like sort of this cozy, warm, whimsical. I really like sort of um, that odd touch, like something that you don't necessarily, you wouldn't think or kind of makes you step back and think like, oh, I wouldn't never think to do that or that's really interesting. Um, I think always having a few items like that in a room really makes it, I don't know, just come together and feel really nice. Welcome to our foyer. This is the room where you enter the house in. I originally, when we first moved into this house, I mean, this room for the house size is bigger than you would see in a smaller home. And I envisioned like having this round table like right here in the center. And so that's what we did. And we lived with it for a few months and it was just wrong. Like it felt so tiny and cramped and it just didn't work. And so after that, I started sort of like re-envisioning this room. Um, we needed a place to sit down to put our shoes on. I mean, when you come in, the kids, like they're dumping their backpacks, they're dumping their coats, they're putting their shoes off. So we have this bench here along this wall. Um, I love to put like just boots and stuff that are too big underneath it. And then we have a basket behind here that the kids just kind of throw them all in there, which works really well. And then I think having a coat hook in an entryway especially when you have kids or just people coming over. It's nice to like have somewhere to put that. So we added this coat hook here. And then as well as like this little table, when I was thinking of like what I was gonna replace this round table with, I was like, you know, searching the internet, looking everywhere and I just couldn't find anything that I loved. And then I remembered in our basement, <laughs> we had this table, which was our dining table in our apartment and so I had my husband bring it up and it just like worked. It's perfect for just like throwing keys. I love having this little, it's actually like a toast divider. I love using that to kind of like sort mail. And so it's not just like all over the place. And then I have like 
personal postcards or just like packages that came with pretty notes. I like to put them up around the mirror because I just think it feels kind of personal and brings in, I don't know, just kind of like a warm personal touch. This is actually a wallpaper that we are planning on wallpapering in here. That's our next project. I love the purple, pinky purple. When we decided to paint our living room blue, which I'll show you in a minute, I knew that I wasn't gonna like this like pinky mauvey purpley color next to the blue. And once we did paint it blue, I was like, yeah, I don't love it. I love this color, but I don't love it next to the blue. So stay tuned, that's our next, that's our next project. And then um, I just love this little chair. We have a lot of accents through the house of this sort of wave pattern. I think it can kind of feel a little bit trendy, but I love that if you like bring certain trends in the right way, they don't necessarily feel trendy. So I don't know, I just love that chair and I just think it's such a cute little accent there. This house um, we purchased almost two and a half years ago, I believe. Um, this house, my husband was actually born into it. Um, my father-in-law owned it since that date. It had been sitting pretty much abandoned. He was really looking to let go of it, but felt really sentimental about it. Um, we were also in a position where we were looking to buy our first home and it just kind of all worked out. We came and we could really envision ourselves here and it gave him a way to still visit the house and be a part of the house, um, but still being able to kind of walk away in a sense. Before we moved in, um, the house, I mean, overall was in pretty good structure status. There was nothing that was like falling apart or, I mean, he had kept it pretty, like he was getting ready to sell it. And so he had kept it, I mean, pretty nice. The kitchen was very outdated. Um, there was a lot of electrical work that needed to be done. The bathroom was very outdated. There was um, a lot of carpet through the bedrooms in the hallway that we had to remove. Um, lots of outdated wallpaper. But the biggest changes we made were to the kitchen and to the bathroom. The other rooms were just very cosmetic. Um, paint, wallpaper, lighting, just nothing um, huge that way. The biggest things we did was definitely overhauling the kitchen and the bathroom. We really wanted to keep it with the time of the house. We didn't want it to feel like it didn't blend, but we definitely needed to make it work for our family and our needs. Okay, um, if you want to follow me into the living room. So, this is our living room. Um, when we first moved in, um, I feel like the layout of this room was really tricky. I always kind of envisioned like the couch being here and facing like towards the fireplace, but this room is narrow and it just wasn't going to work. And it was only after we moved in and sort of figured out the furniture alignment that I realized like the windows were a little bit off centered. And so it was going to be sort of like this puzzle figuring out this room, which it was. I also initially painted the walls white and it was like as soon after I did it, I knew like in my heart that this room was not supposed to be white. I think like sometimes a room will tell you when it doesn't like to be white. And I think when it is meant to be white, the room sort of like sparkles and the accent colors pop. And when it's not, it just feels sort of dead and flat and thinking about what I wanted this room to be and how we use this room, um, I decided like, let's just make it cozy. Let's bring in a color. Let's um, just like, we watch a lot of movies. We have a projector behind here that pulls down. And so we're always watching movies in here with our kids. And so like, it just felt right. So we picked this blue, um, it's called Kitty Wake, I believe by Pharaoh and Ball. We also, added this um, tile on here. Uh, we did do this ourselves. Um, my husband really loves all the projects that I spring on him and he's very gracious about them, but he helped me do this. We did this together. Before it was sort of like this 
brown, this very unflattering color of brown tile. And when we first moved in, we had just painted it black. And then um, kids and living, like it just wasn't holding up. So I knew we needed to change that. And I was always like very in love with this idea of like an English Delft tile. But in the time we were thinking of redoing it, like those types of tiles just weren't in our budget. So I think this is like a really great tile. Only like, I think it was only like a dollar a tile or something. So I found this tile from a site. It's called Mil Milagros London, I believe. Um, all of their tiles are handmade in Mexico. And then, um, and like you can tell they're all super handmade and kind of irregular, but I love that. Like, I think it like really plays to the style of the house. I think through the entire house. I didn't want anything to feel perfect or too new. I wanted it to feel like maybe it could have been here for the length of the house. And so I think that this does a really good job in doing that. The tiles aren't perfect. It sort of brings in that whimsical kind of feel. And then um, I think it really pops against the blue color that we decided to do. So I decided on this rug that we have in here for a really long time. Like I really thought about this rug. It was actually taking up way too much mental energy in my head. Um, I saw this rug back in, I wanna say last March and I like immediately fell in love with it. And it was definitely a, um, it's kind of quirky, I'll show you. It has these sort of like little squiggles and like almost like a foot pattern. It's just really unique and like this little cutout here. And um, I really wanted to bring like some warmth into the living room. I didn't want the living room to feel cold. And so I think this rug does that to this room perfectly, um, as well as kind of having that like quirky, unexpected thing. And I was like, as soon as we put it down, I was like, I should not have thought about this rug that hard. Like it was, felt like it was meant to be. It felt really nice, like as soon as we brought it in here. So um, this is the coffee table. I kind of really like this idea of like a whole house for this room specifically, of nothing feeling like too styled or too like perfect. I like kind of everything, you know, feeling really casual and like you could put your feet up on the coffee table if you wanted to. Um, I really love design books. I'm always getting inspiration for design books. So. I mean, we have a bunch in the fireplace as well. And then I always like to have a few of my favorites here. Um, these are walnuts, which are all throughout the house. They came from a magazine shoot that we did over Christmas time. And when they were styling it, they brought in all of these nuts. And afterwards I was like, felt, I like, felt like I couldn't throw them away. And so I think they're perfect in this um, shell dish. It's by Matilda Goad. And, um, I don't know, they've been actually like really fun to just like when you're sitting here with people to kind of snack on. And I've been trying to find recipes that we can sort of use them up. And I don't know, I just think it's kind of fun and different. So, um, this couch, this is a new, this just came in, um, just a few months ago. We do not have any guest rooms in our house. It's small. There's only two bedrooms. And so I was trying to kind of think of ideas of like how we could have guests over or just like an extra place to sleep if it's needed. Um, and so this couch is actually, it's from Six and Penny. It's um, a pullout couch. So it turns into a bed. Um, it's also just really fun for like having movie nights and kind of like turning this room into like an extra cozy space. Or if someone's sick and snoring in the bed, it's great to have a place to, someone can come sleep out here if they need to. So, and I also just really love that it doesn't look like a, so like you would never know that it's going to turn into a bed if you just saw it. So I don't know, I just think it's a really great design and I love that. Okay, this is Kramer. Um, he is 15 years old. Uh, we got him 
literally only like a few months after we had gotten married. So he has been sort of along for the journey, um, taking this quilt as his, I mean, he has a dog bed, but he has decided this is his dog bed. So, I mean, he's 15, so we let him. I found this lamp. Um, it was from an online vintage store. I really love just the idea of mixing like a lot of vintage with new, with like original pieces. I think that that, um, that those sort of elements together uh, make a really lovely story. And I also just like when I'm shopping even for new things, I really like if they kind of have that vintage feel. So you're not really 100% sure like what in the room is vintage and what's not. Like just furniture and things that have that about them, they tend to last a lot longer just style wise because they already feel like they've been around for a long time. Um, I love having all sorts of little things up here. It's not, I like it not to be like too styled, just kind of um, collections, things we've collected, either handmade pieces or um, just things that are special to us. This um, right here came from my grandma's house. Uh, she just recently moved into a nursing home and that just felt really special for, to me. It's something that I remember seeing growing up and so it just like, I don't know, it just feels special there. Uh, we have, I just barely added this little picture of Kramer up here. Um, we were going through storage in our basement and someone had hand drawn that for me many years ago and I forgot that we had it. And so it was like this happy little surprise to find it and it just fit perfectly up in the frame up on there. Um, I love the bookshelves, just kind of having a place to stack all of our books and a place just like a home for those to go and they just feel really natural there. And then um, I love that like against the blue color, all the colors of the books and the candles and the little things up here just sort of pop and add that like sense of just coziness and color and kind of bring some fun into the room. I know like the word cozy sometimes can be overused, but it was just, has always been something that has been so important to me. Um, I think a lot of that came from growing up. Um, I lived with my mom and um, two younger sisters and um, my parents had been divorced. And so we were kind of just coming from this time of trying to figure out, you know, how our lives were gonna be as like this family of four. And it was like, just like this wild house of a bunch of girls. And my mom was so good at um, just figuring out how to like make the best of our situation. Our home was always just like so filled with love. She was so good at like making the house feel special and just creating special moments all the time. Um, she, I think a lot of that, a lot of that, just like wanting my home to feel like a place that is special and cozy just comes from that time. And so now, now as an adult, it's still something that's like really important to me. And like, even my kids are like getting into bed and they're like, oh, my bed is so cozy, which is like my husband finds this hilarious because it's like never something he would have said growing up. So he kind of like teases me about that a little bit, but I just think it's just something that I like grew up knowing. And so it's just something that I've really tried hard to incorporate into our home now. This is our dining room. Um, uh, we have this very long table in the center. I've always wanted a space that was big enough for a really long table living in apartments and smaller homes. We've always just had a table that could only fit the four of us or the three of us or the two of us or however many there were at that time. And so having this big table with extra seats has been really great for just like entertaining or just feeling like we can have people over in a place for them to sit and eat and go. Um, we also have um, some extra chairs over here and again, you kind of, we have like the wave detail and I really love how they sort of like 
match just a little bit with the little the wave of the sconce and I think that's just like a really cute little detail to have that um, sitting under there. Um, I get teased a lot for all the plates on the walls. Um, we have a lot of plates on the walls, but I just love it. I think it like brings in art and personality and it's different. Um, we have a lot of vintage ones and then um, some more handmade ones I found on IOTA Edit, I believe. Um, so those are like one of a kind plates and I don't know, they're just like really funky and fun and quirky. And I just feel like as soon as like, those were literally the la latest thing I put up. And as soon as I put those up, I was like, oh, okay, that's like, that made the room. Um, we just, in the summer, added this wallpaper. I really love that this wallpaper is like super subtle. You almost can't even tell that there's a stripe on the wall when you're far, it almost just looks like a texture. But then when you come up close, it's like, you're like, oh my gosh, there's a stripe on the wall. And I just love like that it's a little bit more traditional and not too um, over the top because you're kind of coming off of rooms that are uh, more bold. And I think it's just sort of this like soft little texture and pattern. Uh, I love that detail. Um, this uh, candle sconce gets a lot of reaction. I found it on Etsy. People are always wondering where it's from or just like, what the heck is it? I don't know. I get, every time my dad comes over here, he's like, you have a lot of candles in this house. And I'm like, yeah, I do have a lot of candles in this house. I can't argue with him, but like, I have a weird thing with candles. So you'll probably notice a lot of them as we're going around the house, but I don't know. I just think they like bring in this warm glow. And every time I find something new that I wanna bring in, it's like almost always a candle. So I kind of have to like pull myself back a little bit, but do, but I am always also buying taper candles. And my husband's like, stop buying taper candles. We have so many taper candles and I'm like, I know, but we like you go through them and there's different colors and you can change them out for different seasons. And anyway, it's kind of a problem, but it's a good problem, I think. So one thing about me is like, I am not the tidiest person when it comes to closets. It's actually my goal this year to get this entire house like organized in the closets. But I think we just moved in so quickly and it's not something that comes super naturally to me either keeping closets organized. And so, so often when I'm cleaning up, everything gets shoved <laughs> into the cupboards or the closets. Like I'm not even gonna open the kid's closet because it's, I mean, it's a nightmare. But um, we keep like extra taper candles in here. Um, it's honestly a mess, but it's okay. And then we just have like, mail or different things in here. The kids' art projects are stored under here. We honestly just cleaned this out like right after Christmas and it's already a huge disaster, so. This cabinet is original to the house. Um, you can kind of tell like the glass back here is like sort of getting that aged old glass look, which I really love. Um, I've just sort of put all of our more special glassware in here. These um, glasses here. Um, we found these at a little um, vintage shop. It's actually, it's in Salt Lake, or it was in Salt Lake. It actually doesn't exist anymore. But we got them for my birthday many years ago. And um, the day that we got them, we had friends over and um, we like all drank out of these glasses and it just felt really special. And um, that night, I believe it was, was the night I found out I was pregnant with our first child. So this, these just kind of have like a memory around that. The new hobby I've recently found is baking. Um, I really love making cinnamon rolls and just different like sweet, especially like breakfast treats. And I think that, um, is really fun. I mean, we're always 
waking up, coming out here, having coffee. And I don't know, I just like for Christmas this year, I woke up super early and made these cinnamon rolls and we all ate them around the table. And I don't know, it's just like has been kind of come this like uh, thing that I do when I'm like feeling overwhelmed or stressed. Uh, baking sweet things has like kind of become my new hobby. So um, and no one complains about it. So <laughs> that's good. Um, this light here is by a designer, um, Beata Heyman, and, uh, she's a Swedish designer. And as soon as I saw this light, I just fell in love with it. I'm like so particular about like the height of lighting. I will tell you a story in our kitchen in just a minute, but, um, I love that this light you can move up and down because then I do not have to have my husband reinstalled a hundred times, changing the height of the light. I just think it's like so fun, like to have it down, um, you know, kind of feels like more cozy and kind of like fun to have it so low. And then if you need to move it higher, it does. Um, I just love that. And I just think it's like really different and um, just brings in a really kind of quirky, fun element. And I also just like sort of love the, kind of blue detail, kind of greenish teal detail. I think it kind of brings in colors in the adjacent rooms and really um, kind of connects the rooms together without being too obvious. So I grew up in Salt Lake City. Um, I met my husband in high school. Um, we never dated. Uh, in high school, we kind of had a crush um, on each other. like late junior high, early high school, kind of funny story. We had um, a project in, I can't even remember what class it was, but he had to come over, this was in junior high, and he had to come over to my house um, with some other people to put this project together. And he told me, I didn't know this till later, but he told me that when he went home, he told his mom, I just met the girl I'm gonna marry, which is completely bizarre because we had never really been together or anything. And then he messaged me um, after high school. Uh, we started dating at, I think I was 17. Um, we dated for two years and I got married. We got married, I was 19, almost 20, which is kind of crazy, even for Utah. It's a little bit young, but um, a lot of people told us we were crazy and we wouldn't make it work, but here we are 15 years later and it's still going good. Um, we moved into a tiny apartment um, in Salt Lake City and just, I think that was the first time, I mean, growing up, all through growing up, I was like very into like what my room looked like, reorganizing my room, moving things around. And, um, but it was like that first apartment that I like really kind of tapped into that creativeness of, I mean, we were just, uh, I mean, I was still going through school. He had just found uh, a stable job, so money wasn't flowing in. So we, it was a time that we really had to be creative of how do we make this house feel like it resembles us? And how do we make it feel like a place that feels comfortable and um, beautiful? It wasn't very long after that that I started my blog sort of just journaling that process. It was kind of more of a lifestyle blog and um, it's just kind of grown over the years. I've just, I kept it up for years as we moved around. And then after I had my first child um, nine years ago, it's when I sort of moved over to Instagram and it's kind of just evolved from that over the years and to present day in our first house, so. This is um, our kitchen. It was the biggest, scariest for me part of designing this house. Um, I knew when we first did the house that I wanted the basics of it to be really classic and traditional and then sort of bringing in really fun elements afterwards. Um, so that's what we did. We, this floor, is um, wood that we 
installed. It was, it's called seconds wood. So the wood's like really imperfect and you can get it for very inexpensive compared to like a super nice hardwood wood, but it's still a solid wood. I also really loved that eat like it's very imperfect and I didn't want it to feel like we painted a new floor. I wanted it to feel like this floor had been here for forever. And um, I think using seconds for the wood floor really did that. Um, we hand painted this floor, which was kind of a nightmare. <laughs> um, it took so much longer than I was expecting. So my mom and I, we hand traced every single square to the floor. And then I went back the next day and hand painted every single square. Um, I had originally gone through and taped out the whole entire grid because I was like, oh, that will be fast. I can just paint it. And the floor paint we were using was too thin and it was just bleeding through the tape every single time I went down to paint it. And um, so I took all the tape off <laughs> and hand painted every single square, which in the end I feel like is a happy accident because I think it gives that sort of like imperfect softness to the floor. It doesn't look too sharp. And I don't know, I just sort of like loved that it happened that way. It took forever, but I'm happy with the result. And actually the night I painted the floor when I was all finished and it was dark in here, I was like completely terrified that I had just made a really terrible mistake. And I was like, did not want to tell my husband because he's going to be like, you cannot repaint that floor. You just spent so long. But I went to bed and the next morning I was like terrified to come in and look at it because I was like afraid that it was going to just be too much. And um, as soon as I saw it, I was like, no, it's okay. It was good. And it honestly like always starts up a conversation. People are always asking about it. And I think it brings in some like much needed personality into this kitchen. I feel like it kind of has like a lot of different kind of elements in here. I mean, you have like sort of like a more maybe modern sort of take with the marble going up the walls instead of like a traditional backsplash, which I really love. And then um, you have like just a really classic um, style, shaker style um, cabinet. And then we added these um, unlacquered brass nubs, knobs from, um, they're from rejuvenation, but I love that they kind of like age over time and sort of slowly show, you know, that the kitchen is aging. I feel like a lot of people, when I was first putting in the marble, was like, do not put in marble. You do not want marble in your kitchen. The marble stains, the marble etches, like even like when we would go look at slabs, the people at the place would be like, are you sure you want to put in marble? And I was like, oh my gosh, I love marble. I'm putting in marble in my kitchen. And so I love that it like etches and leaves marks and that you get stains and like watermarks and it shows, it evolves with the kitchen. I don't think like a house is meant to stay just in one state. I kind of love that idea that the, your house is always changing and evolving and shows like proof of life living there. So I love the marble there. And then I would just like say the overall feel of the kitchen is very collected. I mean, um, just like modern, rustic, new, old, quirky, sort of all coming together and kind of telling a story that I really love. So we actually recently added this sink skirt. Um, I was craving just like a little bit more color and personality in here. My um, sister is a self-taught seamstress. And so I'm always throwing like these crazy projects, like asking her if she can do them. And we kind of speak this like same language. So like anything I ask her to do, she's like, oh yeah, I know what you're talking about. And like, she's never done these things. And I'm just like, kind of at awe that she has the patience and skill to turn it into something that's really beautiful. So she did that for me and I just like love it. I love that it kind of brings in like this green accent. It adds sort of this punch of color. It's unexpected and I think it's really fun. And I love the pattern on the fabric.
which is also actually the same pattern as the wallpaper that we're going to do in the um, in the foyer. So I love also that sort of little tie back to there. And then um, this light here, we added pretty recently. Um, it was something that I debated about for a long time. This kitchen, I think, looks bigger than it really is. I think a lot, a lot of like, especially these front rooms tend to look bigger than they really are. Um, so for that reason, I like really debated if I wanted to bring in a light over the island and eventually just like trusted my gut and went for it. But when our um, electrician was installing it, I kept like telling him to bring like the light down lower and he was like, no, that's like weird. You don't, you shouldn't do that. And so I was just like, oh, okay, you know, and he left. And then after he left, I was like, oh, we need to bring the light down lower. And everyone was like, no, don't bring the light down lower. Like, that's weird. And I was like, I just feel like it needs to be lower. I know it's like not traditional and I know it's like lower than like what you would traditionally see in design and how low pendants are hung, but I love it. And when I went to do it, it was the hardest thing I have ever done to try and get that light back on the ceiling. I was literally sweating. I thought like I had made the biggest mistake. I did not know how I was gonna get the light back attached to the ceiling. And then like all of a sudden I did it and I was like, oh my gosh. And I was like, never again, it's staying this height for forever. But I don't know, I'm happy I did it. And I have, I, I kind of love that it's like a little bit lower than expected. It kind of makes the room feel cozy and I don't know, I love it. What I love most about our home is the way that it feels. I think it feels like whether you're having like the best of times and you're just like overjoyed or it's like you're feeling really down over something, I feel like when we come home, it just feels like a place that lets us just be whatever. It feels comfortable. Um, it feels lived in. It feels like a place where we can just be us. And um, I think that's something that's really special. Thanks for watching. Go to homeworthy.com for exclusive content and shopping guides.